Welcome to Case in Point, produced by the University of Pennsylvania Law School in collaboration with Bloomberg Law. I'm your host, Eleanor Barrett. Today, we'll take on the topic of whether law and law school are good bets. Joining us to discuss this are first, Heather Fratone, Associate Dean for Student and Professional Engagement here at Penn Law, and from New York, Casey Sullivan, legal journalist and editor of Bloomberg Law's Big Law Business website. To start us off, Casey, from the perspective of the business of law, what are some of the top trends in the market that you're seeing for 2017? Uh, well, one thing that uh, we saw today, which has been going on for the past five years or so, is consolidation in the legal market. Um, the world that we cover is the business of large law firms, so it's like the top uh, 100 most profitable uh, firms in the country. Um, and what's been going on in, in this world has been that firms have been merging with each other basically out of necessity. Um, In-house law departments are shrinking uh, the number of their, uh, the number of outside counsel that they're using, um, which is forcing firms to join forces. Um, you know, the news that came out today was that uh, Norton Rose, uh, this huge law firm um, that's a combination between um, uh, Fulbright and Jaworski and Norton Rose um, announced, well, they, they actually haven't technically announced yet, but news has leaked that they are on the brink of a merger with Chadbourne and Park, which is a really well-reputable law firm in New York City. Um, the former New York governor, George Pataki, is of counsel there. Um, Abby Lowell, who is a famous lawyer to a number of different um, politicians. He was involved in the Monica Lewinsky scandal. Um, when those proceedings were taking place, place uh, with the impeachment of, uh, of uh, Bill Clinton. Um, so, you know, two very reputable law firms who are about to, um, it sounds like, uh, combine. But, um, you know, that's one example of one of the major trends that's sweeping the industry. Okay, well, in light of uh, those trends that are taking place, um, you know, over the course of the last five years, and even today, February 2nd, Heather, how should our law students and young lawyers be thinking about um, preparing themselves as they embark on their careers? Thank you, Eleanor. Um, I mean, I think in addition to what we encourage our law students to, to do and take very seriously in terms of their legal education, their analytical thinking, their doctrinal, doctrinal training, their experiential training, um, one, they're going to need to be flexible. As the market continues to change, their roles, the types of organizations where they are going, the size of those organizations, what work they'll be doing will change, and they need to be flexible in managing that. They also have to think, be thinking about their professional skills. How are they communicating in these larger organizations or you know, another trend is for um, some of our students to be going to smaller organizations in those places where their work will look different than if they're working at a larger organization. How are they communicating with their clients, with the people they're working with, both below them and above them in terms of the organiza organizational structure? How are they thinking about the use of technology in the practice? Not only how they're using technology to serve their clients, but we've seen a lot of changes in the marketplace in terms of what work lawyers are actually doing versus how technology is being used to get the work done. So how are they thinking about it, um, about their practice that way? And a general business understanding. They will be working in these organizations where the bottom line is to make money. Um, and how are they understanding how that happens and what their role in that process is. Well, um, Casey, given sort of these broad market dynamics we're talking about and also world events, um, you know, we've seen sort of the recession come and go a little bit, um, but now we have this new administration and a new era here in the United States. What's your outlook on the legal market? Are you sort of more bullish, more bearish? What do you think? Um, well, based on what law firm managing partners and chairs are saying, um, they're really expecting business to increase going forward under the new Trump administration. Um, they see a robust deal market opening up, um, obviously with Trump, who's uh, anti-regulation, and you'll probably see deals going through much easier. Um, so M&A practices at law firms will pick up, or they expect to, for it to pick up. It'll take a little bit of time. Um, but, um, you know, they're, they are very bullish. Um, you know, we were, what, eight, nine years out of the recession. Um, it seems like things are getting back on track, um, at least at these uh, top law firms. 
And, and you mentioned M&A is sort of a, an area where law firm managers are pretty bullish. Are there any other hot practice areas or sectors that you see as you look across the landscape? Sure. Uh, well, cybersecurity is like the number one practice that all of these major law firms want to be well known and well versed in. Um, you know, you see it with all of the different hacks that are going on with the latest election that, you know, the Russian uh, hacks that happen um, affecting the Democratic Party. Um, and, you know, that's really on the forefront of everyone's minds right now. It's also affected corporate America where you have companies like Target facing major breaches. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, you know, all of the, we hold a number of different conferences on this and, and lawyers talk about it. Um, and there is, there have been, um, you know, some cases that have set precedent on laws um, around this area, but it's a still pretty new area that lawyers are still wrapping their minds around. And um, it's, it's evolving and a lot of laws being set by the plaintiff's bar and not just, um, uh, you know, you know, government regulations. So um, it's a new area and everybody's kind of, um, trying to build out their practices. Uh, Paul Weiss just recruited, well, um, they just, I should say that they just added uh, Jay Johnson, the uh, mm -hmm. uh, Department of Homeland Security uh, secretary. He rejoined the firm and he'll be taking on, uh, he told me that he'll be leading in the, the cyber practice for, uh, for Paul Weiss. So that's something that we're going to be seeing more and more of, I think. Well, Heather, given this sort of quick evolution and even the changes that are happening within practice areas, are there certain things that students um, or potential law students should be thinking about and how can they prepare um, either to enter these hot markets? Is that how should they should be thinking about it or should they be thinking sort of more broadly and flexibly as you suggested before? Yeah, and I, I think a little bit, it depends on the individual. Um, I mean, I agree with Casey. I've been hearing a lot from employers that uncertainty, which there is a lot of right now, creates a demand for legal services. Sure. Um, and in many practice areas, I've been hearing that there's potential for growth, uh, which hopefully there will be. Um, and I think that law students need to think about what are they coming to law school for and how will the place where they're going help get them prepared? Like we talked a little bit about cybersecurity and at a place like Penn, we have a strong relationship with our engineering school and opportunities for students sure. to engage in cross-disciplinary education at the law school and at the engineering school, whether it's a certificate in addition to their JD or a master's in addition to their JD to help prepare them for practice areas like cybersecurity. Same in the health fields, um, same in corporate in terms of our relationship with Wharton. And I think the more law students can think about their legal education in context of the potential to learn or become an expert in a content area in addition to understanding the law um, and how to use it to best support your clients will help prepare them to engage in whatever it is they decide they want to do. Um, great. Casey, what do you see in terms of, any, are there any changes coming in the business models for these sort of larger and also mid-sized law firms? Um, what do you see in terms of changes happening within the industry? We've had this sort of partner model for many, many years. There's some, I think, talk that that's not sustainable. Um, do we have any sense both of how that's changing and what the next generation um, of the business is going to look like? It's interesting. Um, like at the same time that you're seeing this consolidation create these new mega law firms, um, we're also seeing you know groups splinter off and create these boutiques that um, you know focus on one specialty and are able to successfully sell into uh, corporate law departments um, just by you know picking off one piece of their legal work. Um, so that's one thing that I think that we're seeing. Another thing, you know, obviously with technology changing. Uh, the practice of law. There are these new um, technology companies that are offering data analytics around, uh, you know, the legal practice. Um, for instance, here at Bloomberg, um, they came out with this new litigation analytics tool that looks at um, federal judges and can actually look at, you know, how frequently, you know, a judge in this jurisdiction ruled um, in favor of a particular case, whether it's product liability or um, whatever. So I think that th that has been a trend that has been picking up recently, but like the technology 
there is still pretty early on. And it's, like, I don't think that it's really necessarily changing how associates are practicing at this point, but maybe like 10 years down the line, it would, it, it will, it could have a significant effect on, you know, actually replacing jobs at that low level. But I don't think that, I don't get the sense that we're quite there yet. Okay. Heather, given all that we've talked about, um, the changes in the industry, um, the broader market dynamics, and sort of the more general uncertainty and, uh, and changes in the world, uh, is law school a good bet today? Absolutely. Um, I mean, I think so. I think for all those reasons, what law school teaches people to do is complex analysis of difficult problems, evaluation of potential solutions, and figuring out how to move forward, whether it's with a massive transaction or a big piece of litigation or policy analysis. And so I think in our current world, we're going to need lawyers more than we ever have before to meet lots of different needs, big corporate needs, as well as individual civil rights needs. So I mean, I think law school is the best bet out there today. And I think law students need to think about why they're coming and be informed about changes in the marketplace and changes in the world while they're in school to figure out how to develop the skills they need to tackle those issues when they leave. Absolutely. Casey, do you have any thoughts on that point? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, all of the reports that you see in the press about the doom and gloom and how, you know, uh, bar exam scores are, are low. I, you know, from the people that I'm actually speaking with, just anecdotally, they're more optimistic than that. Um, but, um, you know, at least in big law, I don't necessarily think that there are, I get the sense that it's trending in the other direction, that there are more um, openings, it seems. Okay, well, we focused most of our discussion today on practice, but I want to talk a little bit about um, t tension between the academy and practice. Is there such a thing? And can you tell us your thoughts on that, Casey? Sure. I mean, one thing that I've heard just by going to events and hearing firm chairs speak alongside deans is, you know, the question of whether law students coming out of school are practice ready um, to become a practitioner right off the bat. And, really across the board, the answer is no. And there's a ramp up period um, that, it, that it takes for an associate to um, you know, understand what it means to uh, serve a client and um, develop a specialty. So I think that there's um, kind of a push on the law school side to um, uh, respond to that and to create classes that are more uh, focused on really preparing these students to day one to be ready to go right off the bat. Um, along with that, I think that there's a little bit maybe of a focus on, um, I think we're seeing it like just occasionally with uh, some law schools, maybe not across the board, uh, focusing on the business side of the legal profession. Um, I saw that I think Columbia a few years ago um, launched this new course about managing a law firm and, and Mel Immergut, who is the, uh, uh, a partner, a former chair of uh, Millbank, was teaching this class about like law firm mergers and acquisitions and, and things like that. So um, I think that the course curriculum seems to also be changing, if at least slightly. Yeah. Heather, what's your perspective on this question? Yeah, I think I generally agree with Casey. I, I, I think part of what's happening is Legal employers um, take for granted in some respect the wealth of knowledge and ability that law students come with. They are exceptional at analytical and doctrinal thinking because the academy does that really well. That's what their job is. The academy hasn't traditionally been tasked with creating practice-ready lawyers. A lot of that language came up with the downturn in 2008 and the need for law firms to have people ready to bill and generate revenue as soon as they walked in the door. And I think law schools have been responding on all different levels to that. I, I do want to underscore that the academy is really good at laying that foundation, and that foundation is critical. Nobody would be practice-ready without that. And so what are some of the things that we've been seeing and or we've been doing here at Penn Law? We definitely have been seeing an emphasis on more understanding the business of law, what it means to be a lawyer at a large law firm, how those businesses operate. 
Um, we've also seen an emphasis, and we've been focused on this a lot ourselves, in professional development, skill development, some of the things that we were talking about before. Some basic things like using Excel. It's really important in damage analysis or in due diligence for a big deal. And law students may or may not know how to do that. To more deeply figuring out, um, you know, sort of, litigation type skills that you would need um, that maybe the traditional curriculum isn't teaching. And transactional skills too. And transactional skills, absolutely. Two, more in depth, you know, joint degrees with the business school or the engineering school to really give law students the substantive knowledge in the areas in which they might be practicing. All right, well thank you both so much. This was very informative and I really appreciate your joining us.